In this segment of the HDR Masterclass, I want to talk about the course objectives. I firmly believe that when learning is occurring, if we understand what it is that we're trying to accomplish during the learning period, we'll have a much better uh, idea as to why we're covering the subjects we are, where we're trying to go, how the various topics relate to the skills that we're attempting to build. So in this, uh, in this brief segment, I want to be talking about the objectives of this HDR master class, what we're trying to accomplish, our goal, and we'll also talk a little bit about some of the methodologies that I've incorporated in this particular uh, training course. So let's get started by just uh, reviewing the whole idea behind the optimum field capture. And, and the key word here is really optimum. The idea is for you to, when you're in the field, be able to set up your camera in, in, in a way that will give you the best possible series of images. In HDR photography with a typical consumer camera, we will typically take a series of images, uh, uh, three, two images, three, five, maybe seven, maybe even nine. And the whole idea behind this series of images is to capture enough images where we have the broadest range of exposure settings that we can, all the way from the darks, also referred to as shadows, all the way through the whites, also referred to as the highlights. And the idea is to have a good capture sequence where you can go back to your PC and actually do tone mapping and you have the best possible series of images to be working with while you're in the processing mode. So the whole idea is take, take good captures in the field for best possible results during tone mapping. So that's the, uh, the, the, the two core skills that we want to develop here is optimum field capture and proficient tone mapping. A, a secondary uh, uh, objective of the course here is to really be able to help you develop your HDR skills so that you can actually uh, have or, or realize an expansion of your photography. And I think as we go along, you're going to really appreciate that uh, the uh, understanding and the knowledge of HDR photography is going to help you as a photographer in many areas, uh, certainly the handling of your camera, uh, even if you're taking a single exposure, you'll see the scene differently, you'll see the scene better, you'll understand it better, you'll understand the interplay of the light, you'll understand exposure better. That will actually help you compose better. And so HDR photography really will have a far-reaching benefit for you as a photographer. Let's talk about some of the uh, some of the methods that uh, that I utilize uh, when, when I teach and of course uh, specifically we're talking HDR photography now. It's important that you are offered viable reasons for for embracing HDR photography. Not just because you want you want good looking images, but also because you want to be able to benefit from a broader skill range. You want to be able to understand your camera better. You want to be able to understand how to bring your images to a point that you're very happy with. So th those are viable reasons. All right. And so that, that's, uh, I think that's important to, to uh, include all the way through the course. I want to give you just enough theory that you can prepare for HDR photography in your normal regular practice. I'm not trying to make you uh, an HDR photography specialist. I'm not trying to get you to the point where you never have to think again to utilize uh, HDR photography. But I do want 
I want you to have enough theory where when you're setting up your camera, you have a pretty good idea what it is that you're trying to do, what you're trying to accomplish with your overall effort. I want to give you just enough uh, a, balanced, um, a balanced approach here. Uh, it really does come down to capture and processing as your two core skills. And I want this to be balanced. I don't want to, uh, uh, to just talk about capture because that's going to leave you short when it comes time to tone mapping or processing your, your series of images. And I don't want to just talk about tone mapping because if you don't come home with a good capture series, you're not going to have that good of success in your tone mapping. So it really needs to be a balanced approach. I do want you to be able to immediately be able to implement uh, the skills that you learn here in this class. I really do want you to be able to pick up your camera, go into the field, and, 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 and take a, a, a good or a, a usable uh, capture se series, and I don't want you to be fretting about it and, and, and having internal arguments with yourself about whether you should or you shouldn't. I would just like to see you be able to do it, uh, and from there, you're going to be able to build on your skills, learn more, advance your, your photography, uh, your HDR photography skills at least, and ideally have a broader appreciation for your photography efforts uh, uh, overall. So, and so <clears throat> I want you to be able to uh, be able to utilize HDR photography so that you can pursue opportunities in photography that you may not have been able to pursue or perhaps more importantly that you would have not have had as good a success with. Uh, if uh, when I went to the Grand Canyon I, I utilized uh, HDR photography virtually exclusively and uh, very, very bright skies, lots and lots of sun, very dark shadows cast by the, the, the rocks. And uh, certainly in the Grand Canyon, you tend to be uh, up looking down into the canyon. I'm not a hiker, don't want to go there. But I'm looking down at the canyon, which is like a mile down and uh, miles out. And very, very dark shadows, uh, very intense uh, sunshine. It was absolutely gorgeous. But I would not have done well with my photography at the Grand Canyon had I not embraced HDR. And so basically I came home from our trip at the Grand Canyon with about 3,000 images. And from that I was able to develop several hundred images that were just spectacular, where the realism of the Grand Canyon uh, just popped, where the details uh, were, uh, came about, uh, where the colors were retained. I didn't go for anything creative. I was actually looking for realistic images of the Grand Canyon. So basically, I spent $4,000 to be at the Grand Canyon and I embraced HDR photography and I came home and was able to create absolutely stunning images as a result and I have to thank for that the methodologies and the, the, the software and certainly the knowledge that goes into utilizing HDR photography. So that's what I mean by opportunities. That was an opportunity for me that doesn't come around, come around long uh, very often. As a matter of fact, it took my wife and I 10 years to be able to plan the trip and actually do the trip to the Grand Canyon. And I was so happy that I went there with HDR photography uh, as a skill. And since then, that was in 2011, and since then I have embraced HDR photography as a main methodology within my own photography and I have absolutely no regrets. So what we're going to do next in the next segment is we're going to we're going to go through some HDR examples. 
Uh, those, I believe, will really help you appreciate what a single frame uh, the photo from your camera is able to give you versus what you're able to derive utilizing HDR photography methodology. So please join me in the next segment where we're going to go through some HDR examples. I'll see you there.